Hello, good people of YouTube! I don't know why I made that intro. I'm just in a good and jokey mood today, probably because it's sunny. Anyway, as usual, it's Danny here. So today we're gonna discuss about balance. Balancing stuff with our orchids. I am a true adept of a balanced life, a balanced diet, balanced everything. I'm not an extreme person and it works very well for me. And growing orchids is not an exception. I like to be balanced in what I do rather than be extreme. And lately I did make some videos about some extreme topics and I find it a little bit fitting. And also at the end of this video I'm gonna show you a surprise flower. It's not an orchid flower, but I'm very happy about it. Okay, let's dig in. Okay, so because we don't have the perfect environment for our orchids and we don't have maybe the perfect tools and perfect growing methods, balancing stuff out is actually a way to make our life easier with orchids and make their life easier as well because if we can take care of them properly, they will be happier. So here are some examples of how I balance stuff out just to make them work better with my environment. Because at the end of the day, I think this is the key, working with our environment. Alrighty, so you might know that I do have a way of customizing my pots. I do have some preferences when it comes to uh, potting media, pots and so on. And you know I kind of always talk about the perfect balance between airiness and moisture within a pot for the roots because orchids do need water as well as air to do well. And I'm saying this thinking about how they would naturally grow in their own habitat. So, for example, you might notice that all of my pots have some ventilation holes. Now, I use these holes for some extra ventilation, but why do I do it, actually? Well, pretty much because of the type of media that I use. For example, here I have bark chips. Now, bark chips are pretty airy as they are. The problem with them is that they kind of dry in layers. You might notice that the top always kind of seems to be a little bit more dry than the bottom. With bark, it will pretty much always happen because bark is not very water absorbent and because of the gravitational pull, water tends to fall to the bottom, stay there and pretty much not evaporate. So the reason for these ventilation holes is, yeah, to ventilate the pot, although maybe they're not that needed. Moreover, I use them to make the layering, the drying layer, uh, be a little bit more balanced. I don't want to have super dry layers of bark on the top and super wet layers on the bottom. This will not benefit my roots. They will probably not appreciate it and I will be pretty confused whether I need to water this orchid or not because when I water, I cannot only water the top. So the extra ventilation holes pretty much balance this drying of the pot and it makes my life easier. It makes me know when I kind of need to water this orchid or not. And inevitably, this translates into a better life for my orchid it because I don't risk over watering, watering too often practically. And I also don't risk the roots getting into a pool of water at the bottom. And here we have an example of a different type of balance, although it refers to a moisture balance as well. I have here an orchid potted in a mix of bark and sphagnum moss. Now bark, as I was mentioning, does not retain too much water, but it is quite airy. Sphagnum moss, on the other hand, retains quite a lot of water and it's not that airy. So for the orchids which do require to stay a little bit more moist, I opted to balance this drying of the media, not necessarily with the ventilation holes, but they do help, but with this mixture that I made. And this keeps this pot from drying out way too fast. And this translates into an easier life for me because I don't need to water way too often. And also it benefits the orchid because sometimes I just might not have time to water for a day or two, you never know. So this orchid will not necessarily risk the chance of getting very dehydrated just because her mommy doesn't have time to water it. So pretty much this is why I am trying to balance this evaporation rate like this for this particular orchid. So to extrapolate from this idea, you can actually balance the potting media, the mixture of the media, the ventilation holes accordingly to your environment. Your environment is definitely not the same as mine. It might be more dry, so more moss might benefit you because again, you're balancing that drying of the pot in accordance maybe to your lifestyle and yeah, your possibilities. But if you have a more humid environment, you can balance the slow evaporation with bark chips which do not retain that much water and they will pretty much dry out faster so as you can see balancing stuff out is really different depending on each person and each possibility and environment 
but at the end of the day it is in our benefit and in the benefit of our orchids. So rather than using extremes like using bark in a very dry environment and water it every day, making your life harder and possibly putting your orchid at risk, I think it's a better idea to balance it out with a little bit of moss. Okay, another way to balance things out is to try to arrange your orchids on all levels, including on a vertical level. And this really helps with temperature balance. As you might know, warm air tends to stay at the top and cold air being uh, heavier than warm air tends to sit at the bottom. So if you have in the same room orchids which require warmer temperatures and also those who require cooler temperatures, you can pretty much uh, fix it or balance it a bit by arranging them on a vertical level. So just place the ones that like warmer temperatures up and the ones that do great in cooler temperatures at the bottom. And another thing, if you ventilate your room with outside windows, uh, the ventilation, the current will be a little bit stronger below. It might be a little bit cooler if you have cooler weather outside. So again, you can balance and play around with these factors. But yeah, pretty much that's how we do things. If we don't have the proper environment, it's all about being creative. Another thing we can balance is pretty much the growth of an orchid. So imagine you have a pretty sick orchid which has a big flower spike full of flowers. It doesn't necessarily really have too many roots, so at some point you will notice some shriveling and all of that. To balance this depletion and energy loss, we usually cut flower spikes because they are not vital for the orchid. So pretty much this will balance out the energy consumption and make the orchid put her energy into far more useful things for the time being, such as roots and leaves and so on. But again, it's all a balance. It's a spending energy type of balance. And the greatest balance of all times when we're growing orchids is to balance them with ourselves and with our lifestyle. And this implies making the adjustments necessary to give us enough time and enough energy to properly care for them, to properly have time to water them, to look at them, and so on. So for example, if you are the type of person which is very busy, works long hours, but you do want to have some orchids in your environment, Mounted orchids, which require frequent watering every day at least, uh, will not necessarily be a great idea for you and they will pretty much debalance your life. You'll be late to work, you're not gonna have your coffee in the morning, who knows? So balancing out your hobby and your life is crucial really when you're growing orchids and it's one of the keys to actually do great with orchids. You need to have time to properly enjoy them, to properly give them attention and so on. And we can easily fix that. There's nothing wrong in growing orchids in pots. Nothing wrong with growing them mounted. Nothing wrong at all, as long as they do benefit from that balance of air and moisture and they balance with you and your life. Because if you're stressed about something, you're probably not gonna care about that something anymore. You're gonna probably despise it and really, you shouldn't despise orchids. They can bring you so much joy if you just correct some issues to better fit you and your environment in your lifestyle and so on. So again, I think it's all about balancing all these factors. I don't think extremes are ever good, really. I don't know, there might be some isolated cases, but as I was saying, I don't like to be an extreme person with anything. And we were actually talking the other days about shocking orchids into blooming and all of that. That's an extreme attitude. Uh, Rachel was telling me that some Russian forums actually suggest that you water your orchid with hot water, not warm, hot, properly hot, to shock it into blooming. Well, that's a little extreme, don't you think? I'm not the type. If you want to try it out with an orchid you don't really care about, although what orchid don't you care about, really? You can try it out, but that's just extreme thinking. Uh, no. Why don't we try to balance everything out so we're happy, so they're happy, and if they're happy, you know, they might bloom, and if they bloom, we're happy, and again, balance in the universe. Oh gosh, I'm starting to sound annoying. So I'll end this video here. Hope you understood what I'm saying. I do strive to reach balance with everything I do because balance keeps me on the floating line, you know, with everything I do, mentally, physically, and all of that. And I think balance is good for us, really. I don't think extremes are ever good. But that's just me. Alrighty, so here is the surprise flower that I promised you. This is my little citrus tree. I have it for about a year and a half now. It was in a very poor condition when it reached me and I tried to care for it as best as I could. 
and I fertilized it and I gave it as much light as I could and behold we have a flower Alrighty, you're gonna laugh now, but this is the first ever flower, a citrus flower, that I see ever in my life. And it's the first time that I smell it, and it smells so, so good. I'm so happy. Now, this guy will not come with me. However, it will sit with my brother or with my mom, I'm not sure. Probably he's gonna be moved around a bit, but he's gonna be offered uh, proper conditions nonetheless. Because he's a good boy and uh, yeah, my sister-in-law does have a citrus plant as well. She just got it and it's doing great. But in my new environment, I'm going to be full of citrus tree, big ones everywhere, all the time. So I'm really happy for this one. I'm looking forward to grow more of these guys. They smell beautiful. I love them and they look beautiful as an or ornamental plant. But if it makes fruit, edible fruit, why not? I like it. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. Um, my little non-orchid achievement here this is the flower and it does smell beautiful it's the first time so i should make a wish huh all right i wish i wish my channel never dies i wish i keep doing what i do for a very long time because i love what i do and i love you guys for sticking around so that's what i wish for i wish that we do this for many 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 years i think i feel the smell oh my god so pretty Okay, so thank you for watching this segment. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a regular basis. I also do tutorials. Why do you know? I don't always talk about nonsense. But yeah, I do tutorials. So if you'd like to stay up to date and see other orchid videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel. I think I just repeated this. Feel free to leave me comments, suggestions, or questions you might have in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets, and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another ORCHID video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye.